In this video, we're going to look at how you understand and apply basic machine code operations. Back in the late 1940s, a language was developed which took binary machine specific code and allowed us to write groups of letters called mnemonics so that programming would become easier and more accessible. These first low level languages are assembly languages and they sit directly above the raw 1 and 0 machine code that runs on a specific processor. In this video, we're going to start having a look at some low-level assembly language commands. Now, a great way to initially learn and get started with low-level language and assembly code is to uh, download and run the Little Man Computing Simulation. There's some great tutorials out there already on YouTube, as well as loads of exercises and examples uh, on this website. Um, a slight warning though for you AQA people, although Little Man Computing is a great program for getting started with assembly code, because it was specifically designed for education, the language used for AQA exams is based on the ARM assembly language used on the Raspberry Pi and not the assembly language commands used in Little Man Computing. Now in your exams you're going to be provided with a list of assembly language instructions so you're not going to record all of these off by heart. So this is the list you'll be presented with, there's two parts to it. Um, these are the uh, mnemonics I was referring to, the short codes, which would then be translated into machine-specific ones and zeros or binary. And here's a list of typical mnemonics for things like data transfer. Uh, we've got here things like move um, and store and uh, arithmetic, things like add and subtract. And there's also uh, comparisons and branches. These are all branch commands and we've got a comparison down here. There's also a set of assembly language mnemonics based on ARM for doing things like logical operations. So we've got things like ANDs and ORs and XORs, for example. Um, now, just a little note here, and we're going to work through a couple of examples so you can become nice and familiar with this. Um, as mentioned in previous videos, an instruction is based on an OP code, what to do, so that's this bit, and an operand what to do it on. And as mentioned before in the previous video, the operand can either be the actual data that you're performing the operation on, or the memory location where that data is found. Now in your exam, the hash symbol with a decimal value will actually mean do this opcode on this piece of value. So if in the operand you saw hash 38, it means actually use the number 38. If, however, um, you saw, for example, uh, R7, it means use the value stored in location R7. OK, so here's an example of a very simple um, assembly code program based on the ARM assembly language set using the Raspberry Pi. We're going to step through it and break it down so you can understand what it's doing. And we'll refer back to the tables you've just seen, which, as we said, you'll have with you in the exam. So the first line is LDR. It says load the value stored in memory location memory ref 20 into register D. So this is going to load whatever is in location 20, because there's not a hash symbol, and it's going to place it into register R3. So we've taken 20 and we put it in R3. We're then going to perform the arithmetic um, code subtract. And we're going to subtract the value in the operand. So we're going to subtract, and this is the actual numerical decimal value 5. We're going to subtract the value 5 in the operand from the value in this register, which is the one we just stored, we put 20 into, and we're going to store the result in this register, so over the top of itself. So we're going to take 20, subtract 5 from it, and store the result back in R3. We then see a store low-level command, and we're going to store the value held in R3, 
and we're going to place it in the memory location referred by 50. So we're going to load the contents of 20 into here, we're going to subtract 5 from it and store it back, and we're going to take the contents of there and store it in 50. Okay, so let's try another one, this time slightly more complex. Now, what might be a nice challenge here is to pause the video, go back and have a look at the, uh, the table of commands, and see if you can work out what this program is actually doing before I go through it. Okay, let's step through it together then. So this first line is a command to compare. And we're going to compare the value stored in here with the value specified in the operand. So whatever's stored in here, we're going to compare with 10. We've then got a branch, we say branch label. Conditionally branch to the instruction at label, and we see label down here, in the program if not equal to. So having done this comparison, if this comparison is not equal to, this command makes us branch to wherever this label is. So we'll come down here. Otherwise, we're going to do these next two lines. So having moved down to this section here, you can see now we've got a move or copy command. And we're going to copy the value in the operand, which is the actual decimal value 9, into this register. Now, if we were in this part of the program, because of course we could have branched automatically to this label, if we are in this part, we then hit here. And this says always branch to the instruction at label. Well, in this circumstance, label is end if. So if I get to this line, it will automatically branch down here. So you can see, after doing this line, we either do this or we do this. Now, if we ended up down here after our first branch, we can see we now add the value specified in operand, which is the actual decimal value 1, to the value in this register, and then store the result back in itself. So have you figured out what the program does? It starts by comparing the value in register 1 with 10. It branches if the value in 10 is not, uh, value in 1 is not equal to 10, and it branches down here. If it is, then we move the value 9 to the register, and then we end. In a high level language, that is essentially what this program is doing. If y is equal to 10, then x is equal to 9, else y increments by 1. You might have written something very similar to this in a language such as Visual Basic, Java, Python or C-sharp. You'll be familiar with this high-level language context. It's much more comfortable and familiar. These are the actual assembly code low-level instructions which would be run on the processor in a Raspberry Pi. And you're going to have to expect it to interpret and write simple programs like this under exam conditions.